Today, we decided to, as a group, look at some submitted samples of potential meteorites. As a group, we're going to discuss what we see in the samples, what we don't see in the samples from a meteoritic point of view. And we're gonna give our best feedback that we possibly can just based on what we have to look at. Um, I may even slip in a real meteorite. So this is our first sample. Hmm. Meteorite. Oh yes, definitely. It looks like uh, maybe something. Yeah, it has uh, absolutely no. Yeah, I'm not seeing metal. Attraction. Mm -hmm. And they, it could still be, still be a meteorite without being magnetic. It's got that fine grain, like maybe. Um, an achondrite. Hmm. Yeah, that helps to the outside. When I look at this, my initial impression when I first saw it out of the bag was it has the texture or the structure reminiscent of a Eurolite. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at it and I see no triple junctions. I see sporadic. There's no alignment. There's no triple junctions. Uh -oh. You guys, you guys cannot tell, but it is not dense enough. We just discussed Chris Monk cutting mm -hmm. the densest urolite in the world. This mm -hmm. would be the mm -hmm. most non-dense urolite in the world. Mm -hmm. Is it slightly porous also? Are we just not seeing that because it's so busy? Yeah, a little. I'm yeah, as fine, as fine grained as it is, it's, you would think it would be dense and, and heavy. Yeah. It is, so we're, we're not really, you know, coming to a conclusion whether it is or it isn't necessarily on, on a sample. That's, that's, that would be a nice goal, but we're looking at just the conversation and the analysis and the mind that goes into determining a, a meteoritic sample or a terrestrial sample. There was also just a really good point made in the chat that the outside looks exactly like the inside and, and the so. inside exactly like the outside. Exactly. That is a really good point. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and, it, and it should be uh, said that that's our on-step geologist who said that in the chat. Oh, sure, I didn't awesome. know if he wanted to be mentioned or not. So Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So one of the oh. first things we look at is, you know, obviously there's no chondrules or mm -hmm. chondrule-like anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the texture of it is very, very even on the inside and the outside and quite fine textured. Uh, I think that's probably a piece of, uh, so there's a continuum between basalt and, um, and granite. I think that's a coarse grained basalt earth rock. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that feedback. Let's go to sample number two. That's definitely a wrong. That's definitely a meteor wrong? Yes, a meteor wrong. And can you give us anything, I mean, other than a gut feeling? Um, I've, if not, that's fine. We like gut feeling. Well, I, it, it's not a gut feeling. It's just, I've cut open a lot of rocks and I, I don't know what they are, but mm -hmm. you see enough of them. Um, 
that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that internal structure doesn't look like anything that's, you know, meteoritic that I've seen. Yeah. It, it also looks different around its edges uh, as opposed to the rest of the interior. Yeah, and some of that's weathering. Um, the, the, yeah, again, this one doesn't show any triple junctions. Uh, what, what's the magnetic attraction like? Absolutely to nothing. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, that looks like a igneous earth rock. Yeah, let me show you what I think people are hoping that is. One of the unfortunate things about playing the is it a meteorite game when you found it is you're looking for things that it looks like. Mm -hmm. yep. You're oh, hoping yeah. it looks like a Lehrzolitic poikilitic shirkatite. Yeah. So what you're what they're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, what pe people tend to do is they look for similarities rather than differences. Mm -hmm. And those yeah. are not similar. No. Yeah. People do this, oh, you know, my rock is a meteorite because it looks exactly like one on the web. Um, even if you are looking at photos of real meteorites, you're looking at really low res photos and they don't have a critical eye. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was sample yeah. number two. The build and the structure are definitely noticeably different when those are side by side. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and there's another look at the outside as well. Another mishmash. Um, this, this is sample number three. What do we see so far? Green um, crystals everywhere. Yeah, green crystal, green angular crystals. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, that one's pretty inside. Uh -huh. So, uh, Topher, obviously that's a piece of uh, uh, to seat, uh, maybe with a little extra weathering. Yes, this is obviously <laughs> a witness Martian worth $10,000 a gram. Right. <laughs> Now, this is, uh, in my are estimate, spots, are they at all magnetic or are they just a, um, like feldspar? There is no magnetic draw whatsoever. This is a pretty powerful rare earth magnet and it's, I mean, there's nothing on it. And, and I'm sorry, I've got to jump in. The scientist in me says I have to jump in here. Yeah. When we talk about rocks uh, like the, this uh, and, and, you know, the, the common things people call them magnetic. Well, that it's not magnetic that we're looking sure. for. It's how much does it attract a magnet? Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what we're what we're really looking for is magnetic susceptibility. If you mm -hmm. want to get super technical about it. Now, if if your rock could pick up paper clips, then it's magnetic. But <laughs> yeah. You're that. looking for ferromagnetism. Thank you. Yeah. I, I like, I prefer the term magnetic response. Is that full of tiny little holes as well? Good observation. There are some little vesicles in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those that, are holes. That to me says, no way, Jose. Oh, we got another basalt. Um, yep, we're, we're intelligent and wise to pay attention to those vesicles, those, those little holes right there being highlighted. Um, we also want to be careful with black and white, and ErgCheck will teach us that lesson. Um, the, there are meteorites that have vesicles and voids and are porous like this. Um, mm -hmm. the, Zarev comes to mind, we cut a bunch of those at the meteorite mansion, see these pores right here um or the air chocolate meteorite yeah well that that's on the outside necessarily from from the from the fusion crust ablation but i'm talking interior when you see them it's usually um due to a melt and quelching uh, uh, so a, a cool a rapid cooling of a melted rock and mm -hmm. and that's what causes it in meteorites yeah is that melted quench yeah is this a meteorite though no, no. <laughs> a pretty green earth rock, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So here is sample number, I think, five. Okay. 
that looks nice. That's okay. I, that, I'll let other people talk. I mean, potentially. Oh, like a no. little Hello? crust. Nice chunky inclusion. Yes. It's a diogenite. Mm -hmm. Sure looks like one. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you know a lot of people. Go ahead. I'm hearing a lot of people oh. liking this one, though. Yeah, I, I, I think that one has real potential for being a meteorite. Looks like too Danny. Oh yeah. It's well, a strong contender for Diogenite. You guys are very wise. This is NWA 12953, my own personal classification of Diogenite. Yay. And it's, uh, it has, it's a rare Diogenite because it has chromite in it. Cool. Mm -hmm. You normally don't get magnetic re magnetically responsive uh, Diogenite. Mm -hmm. You see those dark patches. I was trying to fool you guys with a really non-looking meteorite. Meteorite. <laughs> no, I just happen to have like 35, 40 grams of it. So, <laughs> well, well done, guys. All right. What about this one? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's got too many vesicles. <laughs> Um, there's uh, I don't also, like the it's vesicle. like not the right color. It's like okay. green it's very brown. porous. Okay, so the color, the porosity. But um it now it's it's really hard to tell over zoom, but that does appear to be metal in it. Yep. And yeah. it should have a pretty strong magnetic attraction. But it doesn't. It doesn't. There uh, no uh, metal in this one. It would stick on that in a heartbeat if that was really metal or yeah. iron. So this is a terrestrial. Yeah, probably an igneous rock. Um, but that one is that one's certainly worth a second look. This one is worth a second look. Yeah. Well, I might just. You know, yeah. I think this is worth not even worth throwing out in a trash outside. It's it. Yeah, it, it's 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 harder when you don't have it in your hand. And yeah, yeah I understand. Stuff, it's yeah. it's it, it's a turd. Yeah, oh, gosh. <laughs> From the outside it doesn't look very interesting. It's a rocket. Yeah, powdery yeah. um, sugar on it. But but. Uh -huh. well, that's obviously a lunar toper. <laughs> is it a real meteorite or am I? <laughs> well, is that a struck vein or a, uh, No, it's actually uh, in two pieces. Yeah. So oh, let's, it's in let's two see. pieces. I, I'm trying to do a slow reveal. Oh, okay. Let's see the outside. I'm trying to do a slow reveal. I <laughs> 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 so can't do a slow reveal without a pole. So, you know, it, it, it looks pretty, oh, yeah, it doesn't look right. <laughs> uh, but from the inside, one, I think a, a critical thing is look on the inside and you yeah. see the white clasps that are there. Notice yeah. that their edges, they're not angular at all. They kind of blend, bleed into each other. Yeah, yeah the big white clasps are are more of a giveaway that it's a null than the smaller ones that are mixed up in the middle. Yeah. Like I could see how if you didn't know about meteorites, how that could possibly look like CAIs in there, those smaller white clouds in the middle. Yeah, definitely not as much now that you zoom in. <laughs> yeah, this, when you zoom in on it, again, I'm not a geologist, but that right there looks like quartz to me. Yes. Yeah, it's too Oops. busy. Which means it's an obvious terrestrial if it has quartz. That's one of the giveaways. But yeah, that's why I did the slow reveal. Once you take a look at the outside, you're like, there's no way that's lunar. That is 100% terrestrial. Yep. yep. And we actually have a, this is a great sample uh, for, for diagnostic and uh, purposes because we have a finished surface 
-hmm. We have the exterior of the stone and a natural break. So we see the inside and we can definitely tell that is not what Lunar looks like. Right. Right. You can almost see the green of that with your naked eye. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just oh, so we can, Again, say meteor wrong. Yep. So we can clarify. Let me, let me show you what a lunar sample would look like. So this is what they're seeing. And they're matching it up to what meteorite does it look closest to? And it looks closest to a lunar like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it's definitely not similar. You have rivers of melt yep. in there. Yep. Yeah. So these are the things that we're looking for when we look at samples uh, and try to either rule them in or rule them out as being meteorites.